Welcome to the training for healthcare professionals. Let's begin with the module on administering oral and other medication. Medicine administration is simply giving medicines. Administration of medicines requires understanding how the medication enters the body, the root, knowledge of when the medication needs to be administered, possible side effects and toxicity, observing what happens after medicine is administered to the patient. The path by which a drug is brought into contact with the body is called the medication route. The different routes for administering medicines are oral, parenteral, that is, intravenous, intramuscular, subcutaneous, inhalation, topical, application, rectal. Now let's see what oral medication is. Oral medication is the most frequently used route of administration, where medication is given through the mouth. Common dose forms for oral administration are tablets and capsules, liquids, solutions, suspensions, syrups, elixirs. A word of caution, the oral route is not appropriate for patients who are unable to swallow. Different types of oral medicines are shown here. These are tablets, mixtures, enteric coated tablets, extended release tablets, inhalers, capsules. Oral medication is given to patients who can swallow the prescribed medicine. Liquid doses are swallowed more easily and hence are suitable for patients with swallowing difficulties and small children. Oral medication is preferred because it is easy to administer and safe. It has rapid onset of less than five minutes. It is economical and painless. Self-administration by patients is possible in case of oral medication. Complications of parenteral therapy can be avoided. Now we will learn how to administer oral medicines. 1. Check the seven rights of medication. Confirm if the prescribed route is oral. 2. Wash your hands and do not touch the medicines. 3. Prepare or gather the medications for one patient at a time. 4. Take the prescribed tablets or the prescribed dose of liquid medicine in a med cup. Wipe the lip of the bottle with the paper towel before replacing the lid. 5. Carefully transport medications to the bedside. 1. Keep medications in sight at all times. 2. Check the patient's allergies, if any. 3. Assist the patient into an upright position. 4. Record the patient's vitals, depending on the medicine being given, before administering medicines. For example, before giving an antihypertensive, always check the pulse and BP. 5. Remain with the patient until each medication has been swallowed. 6. Wash hands after administering medications. 7. Check the patient after 30 minutes to verify his or her response to the medication. You should sign the Medication Administration Record, the MAR, immediately after the patient takes the medication. Do not document prior to giving the medication. If the documentation is not done, medicine administration is not complete. You should also document if the patient refuses a medication, consumes only part of the dose, or vomits after taking the drug. Check the patient's vitals once again half an hour after the medicine administration. Click each image to see some important points to remember. Some medications are produced in different versions for different routes. For example, aspirin is available as tablets or as a rectal medicine. Check that route listed on the drug label matches the route ordered by the doctor. Capsules are preferred over tablets for patients with difficulty in swallowing. Water is preferred over beverages to aid in swallowing. When suspensions are dispensed, Remind patients to store them properly and shake the bottle before taking the medicine. Use extreme caution when calculating dosages. 
pay special attention to decimal points. Check the expiry date of the medicine twice. Now we will learn how to administer eye drops. Take a look at the item checklist. 1. Gloves 2. Lint-free gauze pads 3. Clean washcloths 4. Warm water 5. Eye medicine One, check the seven rights of medication. Two, wash your hands and wear gloves. Three, ensure adequate lighting in the room. Four, confirm which eye is to be treated and the number of drops to be inserted. If different drops are to be put at the same time, ensure an interval of a minimum of five minutes in between. Five, explain the procedure clearly to the patient. Six. Clean the eye with gauze and water to remove secretions, old medication, or any debris from the lids. 7. Ask the patient to close his or her eyes and bathe the eyes sweeping from the inner canthus towards the outer canthus. 8. Ask the patient to tilt his head back or look towards the ceiling and then to roll his eyes upwards and away from you. 9. Steady your dominant hand against the patient's forehead. 10. Gently pull the patient's lower lid downward to form a sac in the conjunctival fold. 11. Hold the medication dropper 1 to 2 centimeters above the eye and instill the medication in the fold. 12. Ask the patient to blink so as to distribute medication over the entire eyeball. 13. Remove any excess medication. Keep the following points in mind. If the medicine is an ointment, apply a ribbon from the inner to the outer canthus. If ordered, a sterile eye pad is taped securely over the affected eye. Remove gloves and discard soiled tissues into the correct waste bin. Return medication to appropriate storage, generally below 25 degrees Celsius, and protected from light. Report if any side effects are observed. The medication should be signed off on the sheet and the appearance of the eye should be documented. Now let's look at the procedure to administer ear drops. Ensure that the seven rights of medication is observed. Ensure that the medication is at room temperature. Explain the procedure to the patient. Gather the following items. 1. Gloves. 2. Cotton-tipped applicator. 3. Sterile water, 4. Gauze square pads, 5. Tissues. One, wash hands and wear gloves. Two. Wipe the external part of the ear canal with a cotton tip applicator. 3. Ask the patient to lie on her side with the ear to be treated facing up. The patient may prefer to sit with his or her head tilted to the side. 4. Stabilize the patient's head with your other hand. 5. For adults and children over 3 years of age, gently pull the ear up and back to straighten the ear canal. 6. Instill the prescribed number of drops holding the dropper one centimeter above the ear canal. 7. If the medicine is prescribed for both ears, ask the patient to remain in the same position for 10 minutes before turning to the other side. 8. If ordered, insert a cotton ball into the outermost part of the ear canal, but do not force it deep into the canal. Remove the cotton ball after 15 minutes. 9. Dispose the used gloves and soiled tissues into the correct waste bin. 10. Return the medication to its proper storage as per the instructions. Always remember the following points. Do not instill any drop forcefully. Do not push the dropper into the ear canal as it can damage the eardrum. Teach the patient about proper ways of cleaning the ear. 
Instruct the patient not to insert objects into the ear canal. Report any sudden deterioration in the patient's hearing or any adverse effects after the administration of the medicine. Sign off the medication in the chart, MAR, and record the condition of the patient's ear canal. Now let us see a demonstration on oral and other medications. Welcome to PO Medication Return. Hello students, good morning. I'm glad you could join me. We're going to be giving um, medications to Mrs. Cortez this morning. I've talked to her about the fact that you're going to come in with me, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab Mrs. Cortez's chart. We want to look through the chart, make sure we have Mrs. Cortez's chart. Mrs. Cortez, Cortez. We're going to turn to the doctor order section. Okay, we've gotten to the physician order section. While we're looking and opening her chart, we want to check the chart for several things. We're giving her medications. We want to make sure she doesn't have any allergies. We want to make sure that she has no swallowing difficulties. We want to make sure she's not in any fluid restrictions. And we're going to flip to the medication section and read her order. We want to check for the, the rights of the medication. So we want to make sure the medication has a route. We want to make sure the medication has a dose. The medication has a time. We want to make sure we have the right individual. And we want to make sure that um, the medication order itself is done date and time and written timely for this patient. This patient is on Lasix, 20 milligrams, POBID, potassium chloride, 20 milliequivalents, PO daily, digoxin, 0.25 PO daily. We want to hold her digoxin if her heart rate is less than 20, uh, 60. Augmented suspension, 400 milligrams PO, Q12 hours. And that is our order. We're going to take the chart, set it down, and gather our supplies. What we're going to need for her medication administration is a medication tray. We're going to need some medication cups. And we're going to need the patient's bar record. So prior to getting started here, we want to wash our hands. Hand hygiene is very important throughout all nursing actions that we take. The other important thing with washing hands is letting our hand sanitizer dry prior to taking any action. So you just rub your hands. You need the friction when you're using a no-rinse um, sanitizer. Okay, so we're going to open the medication record and we're going to find Mrs. Cortez. And this is what our medication record looks like. We're going to compare just for accuracy to make sure our medication um, order was transcribed correctly to her MAR. We see her Lasix 20 POBID, her Lasix 20 POBID, her potassium chloride 20 milliequivalents PO um, daily, her digoxin 0.25 PO one tablet daily, and her augmented suspension 400 milligrams PO Q12 hours. So at this point we are done with her chart since we've identified everything is accurate and correct, we're going to put it aside. Also, at this team, take her bar out of the, the medication record here individually so that we can put this aside and have more room on our medication cart. At this point, we're going to do our first medication check. So, we're going to set up our medication cups and we're going to get out her medication drawer. We're in support test, we're in support test. We want to perform our first check by identifying our medications, first being Lasix. So we're going to look for the Lasix tablet. We have Lasix, 20 milliequivalent tablet, one tablet. And then we look at the expiration date. Well, um, this expiration is 5 of 2011, so that is good. The next is for potassium. Here's her potassium, it's 20 milliequivalents, one capsule. Expiration date 5 of 2011. So that is good, and the medication is all intact, the packaging is intact. Next one is her digoxin. Digoxin, 0.25 milligrams, one tablet daily. So we have one tablet, intact, expiration date 9 of 2012. So that's good. And then augmentin. It's 400 milligrams, and this is a liquid medication, so we need to look on the bottle and see the equivalent for the concentration. This augmentant is 400 milligrams per 5 mLs. 
So we know being the dose is 400 milligrams, the patient needs to take five mLs. And that is our first check. Okay, our second check, we're gonna put our drawer to the side. We will perform and then we will place it in the cup. First thing is our Lasix, Lasix 20 and one tablet. We're gonna put that in the cup. Potassium chloride, 20 millicolins, potassium chloride, 20 millicolins. And put that in the cup. Then we have digoxin, 0.25 milligrams, one. And we're gonna put this in a separate cup in case the patient's heart rate is lower than 60 and we can't give the medication. And the last being our Augmentin. Again, 400 milligrams per five mLs, 400 milligrams, we need to get poured out. When handling a liquid medication, you wanna put your cup on a flat surface. You wanna pour and bend, open your cup, you want to cover your label so that you don't drip on your label when you're pouring. We're going to shake our medication bottle up well to make sure it's all mixed and then remove the lid. Making sure that we put the lid upright to not contaminate. We want to bend down when we're pouring our liquid medication so we make sure that we can see the correct sure we have 400 milligrams of augmentin and 5 mLs. Augmentin 5 mLs, we've checked the expiration date. It expires 5 of 2011. And here's our 5 mLs. Okay, we're going to put the augmentin away. At this point, students, we're ready to go meet Mrs. Cortez and bring her medications. We're going to get to the room. Okay, students, right here, here's Mrs. Cortez's room. You want to knock? Hi, Mrs. Cortez. I'm Patty Donahue, your nurse. Do you remember we talked this morning that I was going to bring my students by to meet you? Yes. Here's my students. Thank you for letting them come in and watch us give your medications this morning. My okay. pleasure. Thank so you for coming. First, what we're going to do, students, is we're going to put our medications down in our MAR, making sure that you bring the MAR with to perform your third check on your medications. Before doing any patient care, we're going to always wash our hands and provide the patient with privacy. This is our right patient. So we're gonna look with our MAR and her arm band. Where it's a quartet, date of birth 630, 1970. Where it's a quartet, date of birth 630, 1970. Okay. This is Cortez, I'm gonna raise your bed just a little bit if you don't mind. Not at all. Have a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna raise your head up a little too. Tell me, Mrs. Cortez, do you have any allergies? No, no allergies. All right. Because, you know, doctor is starting you on a new antibiotic, so I want to make sure that that's safer to, to give to you. All right. So, students, regarding her medications, one thing that we needed to do prior to giving was check Mrs. Cortez's pulse, apical, because she's on digoxin. And in checking an apical pulse, you want to make sure that you check the pulse rate for one minute. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It's always good for infection control purposes when you, with whatever equipment you use to clean off um, prior and after the patient's use. If it's a piece of equipment you use patient to patient. And checking the apical pulse, we want to go skin to our skin stethoscope. I'm going to just listen, lift up your gown a little, Mrs. Cortez. And we want to go apical, so finding the apex of her heart. And we are going to listen for one minute. Very good, Maritza. Your typical heart rate is 78 and very regular. That is great. So we can give Mrs. Cortez her medication because her pulse is above 60. Mrs. Cortez, do you like to take all your medications at once or do you like to take them individually? All at once. All right, very good. We're gonna get you some water. And we have identified that Mrs. Cortez doesn't have any swallowing pro, um, issues and she is not NPO. Okay, 
Okay, we're gonna perform our third check prior to giving your medications. And then we will open them. So first we have the Lasix, the 20 milligram tablet, and one tablet. And we're gonna pop it open and put it in her cup. Dispose of the wrapper. Potassium chloride, 20 milliequivalents. Potassium, 20 milliequivalents, one capsule. Pop it in and throw the wrapper. And now we know we can give the ditch. Ditch, 0.25 milligrams, one tablet. Pop it in and get rid of the wrapper. And we have our hot
always remember to complete your documentation after a procedure is done.